how to change everything except the core of who you are. That's coming up on The Whitney Reynolds Show. The Whitney Reynolds Show is supported by the Illinois chapter of the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, whose mission is to save lives and bring hope to those affected by suicide. Children's Learning Place, excellence in early childhood education since 1998. Evolve Her, a collaborative workspace for women. Kevin Kelly with Jameson Sotheby's International Realty. Luxury is an experience, not a price point. The Jay Parker, a Chicago rooftop restaurant at the Hotel Lincoln. And Hollis Plyman and Company, a Jacksonville CPA firm assisting individuals and businesses with financial success. Special thanks to Dr. Daftari and the team at Arta Modern Dentistry. Cellular Intelligence. Goldfish Swim Schools of Chicagoland. Deluxe Cleaning Services. EGA Salon and Spa. Chicago Andrea Creative. And Export Fitness. Reinventions. We're not talking products. We're meeting real life people that have chosen to pivot in this thing called life. They're here to share what it's like on the flip side. You're watching The Whitney Reynolds Show. Being on set is common for our first guest. For several decades, Sally Lou Loveman was an audience producer for The Oprah Winfrey Show. After her long life love was closing shop, she decided to look inward at her own talents and mix them with her current abilities. She joins us now with Love Speaks. Thanks for joining us. I'm so happy to be here. So we heard a little bit of your story and what a transition. Was there this moment that you just knew it was time to develop your talent? Yes. And it, it was a moment that you, you're never looking for the moment. It just happens. It's sort of like reinvention um, is something that comes to you usually. And, and that's when you go, oh, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I had a dream career. I always wanted to work in television. I worked for the Oprah Winfrey show. I was the Warm up act before Oprah came out, so it was it was a it was an incredible ride, and when it was over, I had some opportunities to do things for other brands, other stages, other audiences. And one day, at the National Restaurant Show, when I was emceeing um, for a four day event there, this audience was like lined up after one of the segments, and and I'm thinking, oh, what are they doing? <laughs> What are they giving away? <laughs> and they were lined up to speak to me. And I thought, well, but I'm not at Oprah. And that's when I realized, oh, I have this thing, this connection, this ability to connect hearts in the room or hearts to a brand. Mm -hmm. And it works outside of the building of the Oprah Winfrey show. So that's when it really hit me. Do you think that unless the Oprah show ended that you would have ever had that epiphany moment. No, I would have always thought it was tied to Oprah and that it had to be because that's where I worked. And so, I, you know, I always said to people, it was not hard to warm up the audience for Oprah. They were already coming in hot, right? Yes. They were coming in excited. They had their nails done, their pedicure, their hair, everything. But it was a joy for me to connect those hearts even further. And what we did there was it wasn't so much about the audience coming to see Oprah, although that was obviously their whole intention. It was about the audience coming together mm -hmm. and being together and bringing the person that they watched the show with or that they loved or that they had standing by their side in their life. And so it was about the connection of the people in the audience. For me, my business, Love Speaks, is a reinvention of the Oprah warm-up. So that's interesting. So where I really want our viewers to grasp mm -hmm. is that your reinvention wasn't becoming somebody totally different. No, it's about tweaking the talent that you already have. It's about mm -hmm. what do you do well? And maybe all of a sudden, what you do really well at the it, where, wherever you are, your company is done. It's over. And you don't have anywhere to go 
where you are, but you still have your talent. So where are you taking that talent? Take it to another environment, but take it to an environment that, that you love, that pleases you, that pleases all of your senses. And that's what reinvention is. It comes knocking hard and usually you can see it. What has been one of the hardest journeys to stepping out on your own? Because that has to be one of okay. the scariest steps. Horribly scary. Mm -hmm. I'm not attached to a brand. People don't take my calls. People don't hear me as well as they would. I mean, I was the girl with the tickets to the greatest show on earth. So people were taking my calls and listening to me. So I have been told no more than I've been told yes. Well, that's interesting because the no, we always hear about the yeses because that's one of those things that the yes has got you here and there right. and there. But you're right. There's a lot of no's along the way. And how do we navigate past those when we are evolving into something new? The way I look at it is there are going to be more no's than yeses, but the yeses will take you where you want to go. And you don't have to score every time. You don't have to win every time. Mm -hmm. Like there's an audience for everybody. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what you're doing, but there's an audience for you, whatever your brand is, mm -hmm. whatever you're speaking to. And so that person or a client might not take you this time, but it's going to make you hungrier to get the next, the next opportunity. Mm -hmm. And it's important to understand that it's okay to feel bad mm -hmm. when you get the no, but how is that no going to make you want to get the yes even more so? So for me, reinvention is about what is my talent defining that talent, owning that talent, sharing that talent, and using that talent in a new way, in a new modern way, in a new environment, in a new just expression, you know? Mm -hmm. So when something is taken away from you, when, when your job, when you lose your job for whatever reason, mm -hmm. for me, it was a show ended. For others, it's, there's, there's a number of reasons right. why people lose their jobs. It doesn't have to be the end of what your dream is and what you're good at. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember I sat on, on Gail King when she had her show and she interviewed me uh, just at the end of the season. And she said, I don't think it's over for you, Sally Lou. And I'm like, it's not, <laughs> it's not over. Okay. And it, it, you have to almost have people in your life to tell you it's not over. Right. You're just beginning. It's just another decade. It's just another story to tell because our stories, I, I, I always like to say, tell your story like it's your job and love your story like it's your job. It is our job to really love our stories mm -hmm. and, and, and know that they're not over yet. And it's not over. keep, keep hearing when, when it, when it knocks at the door, I, 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 sh I, I share the story all the time. I'm sitting in my office the last day at Harpo construction crew comes in to my office and starts sledgehammering out all of the, all of the cubicles where my team, while you're in there, I, it's my last day. I'm like, could they have waited a day? And at first I'm thinking it's really mean, but then it was this gratitude moment. And I went, Oh, I get it. Sometimes you need a sledgehammer in your life to say it's over and now go and do it somewhere else and mm. do what you love in a way that is new and modern. Sally Lou, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, Whitney. Finding the what is the good stuff, or so says our next guest. Let's take a look. So finding your what. Steve, welcome. That's what your mantra is. It is, thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm glad you're here because I think everyone watching is probably like, okay, what does that even mean? Like, how mm. do we find our what? Yeah, look, there's obviously been a lot of talk around the why. And we've got a show called Reinvention Radio where we've had lots of guests on over the years, including people like Simon Sinek. So we had a nice little conversation with Simon around the why versus the what. And just so we can kind of answer that question right out of the gate, your why to me is everything that is external. Like you can choose your why. Like you might do something because you want to feed starving children in Africa, you want to take care of your family, you want to provide clean drinking water, et cetera, et cetera. Right? So it's something that you can choose. To me, your what really is that which has chosen you and it's not that which you have chosen. So it's in your DNA. It's really a part of who you are. I mean, you can spend a lifetime in denial about it, but ultimately your what is internal. I think your why is external. That's how I define it. That is super interesting because I've never seen it in like these two categories. Yeah. So your why is basically the mission, like why you're on it, why you care. Mm -hmm. But the what is really what you say is inside of you. Yeah, so your why is kind of a goal or an objective. Your what is how you're naturally wired to excel. I mean, it's really what puts fire in your soul. Yeah, so what if someone's watching that's saying, 
I don't really know where my fire and my soul is. Like, mm -hmm. how do they identify their what? Yeah, well, it all really begins with kind of turning on the light switch in terms of saying, I actually have a what. I mean, most people, as I said, will go through a lifetime without ever really figuring out what their what is, mostly because we don't teach this stuff in schools. Mm -hmm. These aren't conversations we have around the dinner table. And so the whole notion of, look, you are naturally wired to excel in a very specific way just isn't a conversation a lot of people have. So if they're sitting there thinking, you know, I don't know what it is or I, I don't know, right? Like the, the fact of the matter is that it probably hasn't been broached in this way with them before. So the first step really is just to turn on the light switch and just say, okay, I want to figure out how I'm naturally wired to excel and what it is that I'm really good at. And once that light switch is on, it's really hard to turn off. And when you say naturally wired to excel, are you saying like talents or abilities? Yeah, so let's back up for a second. So the what is your what framework, if you will, is comprised of three specific components. One is your core gift. So that could be for you, maybe it's communicating. For others, maybe it's teaching, maybe it's healing, maybe it's um, enrolling, protecting, et cetera. So we all have a core gift. So that's one piece of the framework. The second piece is then you need a vehicle. Like for you, it's this show mm -hmm. or other ways that you share your gift. But then the third piece of the puzzle, which is equally important to all of that, are the people. So who are the people that you are most compelled to serve? So it's a combination of the gift, the vehicle, and the people that make up the what is your what framework. And it's really hard to identify one piece of the puzzle, let alone all three. But you can imagine once you're clear on all three, I mean, that's really when the magic happens. And, and it can be uh, a talent, so to speak, mm -hmm. in terms of like maybe basketball is the way that it comes out or maybe massage therapy is the way that it comes out. So it can be a talent, but ultimately, as I said, that is already in my way of thinking pre-assigned to you. And it really only takes one thing to have an, uh, just an extraordinary impact on both those who share this lifetime with you and those of lifetimes to come. And so the what, once you know that, then you can determine your why. I believe you can do both. And they, I mean, they are not mutually exclusive and one doesn't necessarily have to come in front of the other. But if you're clear on what your why is, as an example, like you know you want to provide clean drinking water for you know, people in third world countries, as an example, mm -hmm. then you can back into understanding how you're wired to excel to help facilitate that process. And what if someone's watching that's like, what? I got my life all wrong right now. Yeah. What do we do? Um, a, don't quit your day job, right? I mean, like, for real, that's, that's what ends up happening. So you say that. You say actually stay where you're at while you discover. Let, somebody, let someone else fund your transition. Interesting. You know, because reality is they are paying you to go from point A to point B. Let them pay for it. But the reality is you have to be really clear on how you use your time. Because there's really only two ways to use your time, right? You can either spend your time or you can invest your time. Most people spend most of their time in a way that doesn't provide a meaningful ROI. So I'm saying this from the standpoint of there are a lot of hours in the day. When's the last time you binge watched Ozark or binge watched, you know, Orange is the New Black or whatever? I mean, think about the number of hours that you invest in doing something like that. And it's not investing, right? It's right. spending. But what you're doing, if you come right down to is you're actually supporting those people living out their what, right? The what of the actors, the what of the producers, the what of the, I mean, the directors, et cetera, the cinematographers, et cetera, right? So when you're doing that, not to say you shouldn't do that, but you're kind of supporting their what. That's such an interesting mind shift. Well, that is good. Thank you so much for coming on today and helping our viewers understand potentially what they have inside. For sure. So many play on the words what. I just I can't <laughs> help myself. Thank you for coming on. You're welcome. Reinventions are taking over the big screen in a big way. We caught up with director Bill Holderman to talk about his new movie, The Book Club. For anyone that's watching this interview now, that's in a major life change, yes. right? This movie like features that. Well, yeah, I mean, the whole sort of concept of the movie and the theme of the movie is to believe that you have value and believe that you have self-worth and believe that if you want happiness, just go out and get it. And we're, we're hoping that it's hopeful and optimistic and encourages people to go sort of live their fullest lives. Mm. What an amazing cast, yeah. first of all, yeah. and to get them all together. But was this were they reinventing their lives? A, a little bit, yes. I mean, I think they were, it wasn't that they were reinventing and creating some new version of themselves that never existed, but I think they were sort of reawakening something that maybe had laid dormant. And I think for each of them, they were finding that 
part of themselves that they probably have always had in them, but hadn't been, you know, given life for, for a little bit of time. Mm-hmm. The thing that was amazing is they actually became really, really great friends. The stories they would tell, I mean, again, they've been in the business for a long time. They had a lot of shared history mm-hmm. and they could really relate. I mean, not everyone has the history of movie stars, but for them, it was like, oh my gosh, these are my people. And so they would sit in the green room and just tell stories and gossip and have fun. And that energy, we just brought right on set and just let that natural organic friendship continue to exist. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for creating such a passion filled movie of just pulling out those emotions that are real, honest in real life. Yeah. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. It's now time for you, the viewer, to weigh in on today's topic. This week's viewer's voice question is, have you made a drastic life change? Hi, I'm Lee, and I made a drastic life decision when I decided to forego college after high school just for a year and live in Spain. So I moved to Spain alone, um, and I lived there for 12 months. Get social with us. Make your voice heard. Submit your video on WhitneyReynolds.com. Reinvent the reinvention. That's Amy Slater's reality. She is here to talk about the phases in life that make you, you. We are so glad you're here. Welcome to the show, Amy. I'm so glad to be here. So we've been talking about reinventions. And one of the things I find very unique about your story is you've been in kind of a constant reinvention. Absolutely. I think you start out in life thinking that you're going to live this fairy tale dream and then you fall short of that and you're not really sure where to go. So, and as a mom, as a worker, and you've gone from corporate America to working for yourself back to corporate America, how do you constantly reinvent? Because I think sometimes when we think about this topic as a whole, we're like, okay, this ended, so I'm going to start this and I can be someone new. But you're saying it's not necessarily that. Yeah, I think it's more about what's inside and what's in your heart, not necessarily about who am I going to be tomorrow? And the world looks at you one way, but I think if you could continue to think of yourself in what drives you, then that's going to be the journey that you take is one that that isn't a lot of sharp rights or sharp lefts. It's sort of a gradual movement as you flow uh, through those different personas. Something that comes to mind whenever you say the look inward is flexibility, a key word. I would say flexibility is a huge word because it isn't black and white. It is that we really do live in the gray. And if we get manipulated by sort of the black and the white, then you're really not going to be flexible. You're going to be very rigid, actually. What's an example in your life that you can say, I was trying to live black and white, and really I need to be right here in the middle? Yeah, I think a lot of that came when um, being married and being a worker. So I was, uh, I was a wife and a mother, and I was a worker. I was an employee. And really just trying to be this corporate mom mm-hmm. and walking in the door and, and having to go from being corporate to then being a mom and thinking that I had to take on off and on a hat and realizing that that really was not a key to success. So how did you navigate that? Because that is something I feel like any mom or dad watching today that feels like they kind of put on these different hats... I know I've been there and I've been wearing that hat too. Mm -hmm. So how did you navigate? I'd say first I crashed and realized that I couldn't. I couldn't be all things to all people. And so I I hired a coach. I started to take time to do the things that are sort of the thing to do these days. Meditation and yoga and all these things just to sort of reset who I was and to even find out. I think... 15 or 20 years ago, if people asked me what I was passionate about, I didn't have an answer. And I think that's just because I was living more of a robotic life of the things I thought I was supposed to do. And I finally let go of that. So for our viewers, if they are feeling like they are living the life that you did, what advice would you have for them? I would say to slow down. You have to make that decision to slow down. You can't just, okay, I'm going to slow down. And then you go tell people, you know what? I'm going to slow down. Because in this crazy life, especially as, as, a, as a working parent or just a working person, people carry this badge of honor of being busy. I'm so busy. I'm so busy. Sorry, I can't see you. I'm so busy. Like it's something really important, but it's not. I'd rather tell people, I'm going to slow down. 
and I might still be busy, but I don't use that word. With a friend of mine, we call it the B word. I try not to say busy. I just say, yeah, it's kind of hectic right now because busy has this weird connotation. So you just, by not saying you're busy, maybe it forces me to slow down. So by slowing down, do you think that makes us more adaptable? I think so because you see what's around you. If you're just rushing to and from, you miss things that might be right there in front of you. Right. When you walk down the street, when you drive a car, sometimes I just sit in the car when I get to my destination and I just stop. I'm in the car so much. I sometimes just sit in the car for a few minutes before I transition to the next place. And you just kind of think this is me now, this is where I am. Because I mean, I think even not just the mo mother and the working concept, I'm thinking even going from corporate America to working for mm -hmm. yourself, this mm -hmm. flexibility factor is kind of going to follow us for our whole life. Was there this falling moment for you that it just all kind of came out where you said, okay, I surrender. I am now going to be adaptable Amy. Yeah. 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 Because I wasn't always <laughs> just ask my kids. I definitely wasn't adaptable. It was always predictable and planned. And I have, I have it all mapped out and you never know what's going to come at you. Mm -hmm. And I had a situation where I lost a job, not any fault of my own. I lost a job, a company changed direction and I cratered for about half an hour. Mm -hmm. And then I called my coach and I said, I lost my job. And he said, congratulations. Now get on with it. And the next day I woke up, I said, I'm going to start my own business. And then a year later, I got a text from someone who said, I think you would be great for this job. What do you think? All right, well, we'll see. I wasn't thinking about it. Three weeks later, I had a, a job back in corporate America. Wow. But I realized that I can still be who I am in corporate America. It's not dictated by the walls around me. Do you feel like maybe the reinvention changing is things that you do, but not really who you are. Yeah. And that's kind of the paradigm shift that we take. Absolutely. And that's such a good, such a good point because so much of what, how we move through life is based on what we think is prescribed. What's written on an application. I am a mom. I am a worker. I am this, I am that, but it's who you are. No matter what those trappings are around you, you can be more flexible if you don't worry about how you're defined outside of yourself. Right. And then there's no real reinvention because you know who you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's where it becomes flexibility. So reinvention isn't, again, like I said, making a quick turn. It's gradually moving with what feels, what feels right. And then if you don't slow down, you're never going to figure that out. So where are you now and how would you speak to younger Amy? Yeah. So, so today, um, in a, in a corporate job and have a, a great team of people and they're all early in their career. And so I have a lot of people that happen to come to me and ask. And so my advice is think about what makes you happy, not what your parents want you to be or think you should be or what you thought you were going to be when you were in college. Mm -hmm. Think about what makes you happy and how can you, we have to have an income. Think about how you can translate that mm -hmm. into something that's, that's financial. And so I even, I tell that to my kids. I want you to have a job, I want you off my payroll, <laughs> but do something that, where you can feel happy. And when you stop being happy, think about doing something different, that it's okay. It's not set in stone. And the flexibility factor comes in again. Mm -hmm. Well, exactly. thank you so much, Amy, for coming on. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. No matter where you are on this journey of self-discovery, be encouraged of the skills and future that you have. Today's guests are a reminder that the best is truly yet to come. For more information on today's show, you can visit WhitneyReynolds.com. Go beyond the interview with Whitney Reynolds in her 52-week guide of inspiration. The book goes deeper with the stories you see on the Whitney Reynolds Show. To order your copy for $12.95 plus shipping and handling, Go to WhitneyReynolds.com backslash store and use code PBS. The Whitney Reynolds Show is supported by the Illinois chapter of the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, whose mission is to save lives and bring hope to those affected by suicide. Children's Learning Place, excellence in early childhood education since 1998. Evolve Her, a collaborative workspace 
for women. Kevin Kelly with Jameson Sotheby's International Realty. Luxury is an experience, not a price point. The Jay Parker, a Chicago rooftop restaurant at the Hotel Lincoln. And Hollis Plyman and Company, a Jacksonville CPA firm assisting individuals and businesses with financial success. Special thanks to Dr. Daftari and the team at Art of Modern Dentistry. Cellular Intelligence. Goldfish Swim Schools of Chicagoland, Deluxe Cleaning Services, Ega Salon and Spa, Chicago Andrea Creative, and Export Fitness.